Ivy to my home. She brought this amazing tea service. We've already started to dig in because this is actually part two. The first part is on Ivy's channel, the solo artist. Please check her out. It gives more context to <laughs> yeah. what we're doing. In this video, we're going to be talking more about some personal stuff. We're going to be talking about relationships, relationship advice, confidence, things that everyone needs to worry about when they take on weird fashion slash costuming. It's so true. The big thing that I struggled with when I first started wearing weird clothes was definitely like wearing them out into the world. Ivy, beautiful, accomplished, <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> the perfect costume inspiration. But um, no seriously. How do you feel confident when you go out in your clothing? I didn't think through my answer, so you're gonna have to cut this out. <laughs> That's but okay. let me think about it for a second. I think I gained a lot of confidence through experience and thinking through like what the worst case scenario is. Because when you leave the house in historical costumes, people are gonna ask like what you're doing. But that's literally the worst thing that's gonna happen is someone's gonna be like, oh, why are you dressed like that? And you're gonna be like, for fun. <laughs> It's the one and only Eagle Double G. No, no. And they're gonna be like, cool. And that's it. It really is not usually that bad. So it also helps a lot to go out with a group. Because I feel like sure. people have fewer questions. They're like, oh, those are people and they're doing a thing. <laughs> like, they just have expectations that there's an event versus a single person who's out. So if you have a friend for backup, I find that that helps me a lot. Yeah, definitely. Kind of just focusing your thoughts more inward, just like, I enjoy looking like this, I enjoy feeling like this, it makes me feel good, and when I go out, I'm not causing anyone any problems, like if someone has a problem with me, that's really on them, not you, so you should feel confident in the fact that you're just having a good time for yourself. I think like social anxiety definitely can get the better of you sometimes. You're like so worried about what other people think about you, but probably the only thing they're thinking is what is going on? and she looks really good. How do I find out more? Like, honestly, that's been my experience true. on the overall. Mm -hmm. yeah. What is the funniest reaction you've gotten when you're dressed up? So, I love this question because the variety is incredible to me. The number one that I always get is, are you in a play? And the answer is no, <laughs> in a play. And then from there, it's always super dependent on the time of year. Weirdly, I get a lot of seasonal questions. Mm -hmm. Like, if it's near the Solstice Festival, someone will be like, are you gonna be in the parade? Or my absolute favorite reaction ever was, I was wearing a green Victorian bustle with fur, a fur collar. And someone was like, are you going caroling? <laughs> I never know what to say to people, so I just say yes. <laughs> I, just, I just agree with them. I'm like, yes, <laughs> that's what's happening. That totally kind of goes back to the first question, which is most people just want to know what is going on. It's like, true. They want to know and be invited. Yeah, people are like, is this a festival? Where's the festival? I want to go to the festival. Exactly. Like they're, they're excited because they think something fun is happening. Yeah. So what's the funniest reaction that you've ever had? Is it recording? Okay. It should be. One more time. <laughs> High quality B-roll. <laughs> so what's the strangest reaction that you've ever had? It's definitely a time that I was wearing Lolita. I was at a convention and I was in an elevator. One of them was extremely drunk, like about to pass out, about to throw up, and we were all just kind of like, do we help him? What do we do? Finally, he got to his level. I don't know how he knew where he was supposed to go, but he goes out, he falls down, and he vomits. And then <laughs> we're like, do you need help? And he's like, oh, I'm good. And he gets up and he starts walking towards his room. The elevator door is closed and we're all just standing there. Damn, he went a little too hard. I finally get to my stop. I am stepping out of the elevator and my new group of otaku friends are just like, wait, don't go, I love you. <laughs> Basically, 
basically, they declared their love for me, having just met me because I was wearing Lolita. It's like a little awkward, I gotta be honest. I don't know if I'd be into that. <laughs> I guess you're just that pretty. No. There's definitely like the very kosher people yelling at you from their car, but... You know, don't scare people off though. Yeah. Everyone's gonna be like, no, I don't wanna wear that. <laughs> be a little prepared because people will take photographs without your permission which is the worst case scenario, but sometimes people ask permission, so be aware that you probably, there's a good chance you'll get photographed while you're out. Yeah, it's definitely weird. If you think of it from our perspective, why would anyone want a photo with a random stranger? But I mean, when you're dressed weird, people just wanted your photo. It's very strange. I think from their perspective, we're like an event in their day. Exactly. Like, I was downtown and I saw this Victorian lady and it was really weird. Yeah. Look at this picture, they want to like show people their experience, but please don't do that. If you ask, I will always, always agree to a photo, but it's very rude to take pictures of people without their permission. The funnest thing though is when someone does recognize what you're doing. Oh, I love that. Yeah. You're like, oh, um, are you dressed for the second bustle era? And I'm like, oh, oh well, how did you know? <laughs> please let me tell you everything. <laughs> When we went to that estate sale, the lady who was working there loved my Lolita outfit. She, yeah, she used the word. She knew what you were doing. Yeah. I was like, that's really nice. And she gave me a discount because of it. Speaking of estate sale, I think we're sitting on something. Yeah, uh, this is from an estate sale. This is from that estate sale. It, oh, yeah, I forgot. And The reason I didn't get that matched hair is because it's natural form, which is not my era. Yeah, I like that. Like, I don't know. I think it is. <laughs> Speaking of reactions, how does your partner feel about Lolita? I mean, how does your partner feel about historical costuming? He is so supportive. He's almost too supportive. Is that a thing? Is that possible? No, he's perfect. He's perfect. He loves my historical costumes. He thinks they're so cool. At least that's what he says. He thinks that. I think he's telling the truth. He's always willing to sew me into a dress for an event that I didn't finish on time, or he's willing to be the Instagram boyfriend who stands around taking a million pictures. So really appreciate that he doesn't mind spending his own time on my hobbies. So what about you? How did Ryan react when he first saw you in Lolita or historical clothes? So we met on a dating app, like most of us these <laughs> days, but I had like a crazy assortment of pictures, like me in normal mm -hmm. clothes, me in Lolita, mm -hmm. me in like cosplay I think and I think he said he had no way to like get a read on me he was just like this girl's cute and she does cute things I want to date her <laughs> and I think since then he's learned to appreciate it because I put so much time into it I know he's not super interested in learning it for himself but he is constantly helping me do fittings <laughs> and things he's always giving me like super helpful suggestions and ideas he's like why don't you try this and i'm just like hi huh, i never thought about that he's picked up on how to do things and he's like i can tell that that is not the right fit it's cool and i think like that's probably the best way to have a relationship is where both of you have different things that you can both appreciate just because the other person is so passionate about mm -hmm. it I really liked what you said about how he sees how much time you put into it. Because I think that's probably true of my partner as well because I don't think people really fully appreciate how much time and energy and work goes into one ensemble. Mm. Some of them can literally be like weeks or even months of your life to put them together. So I do think that your partner has a unique perspective to be able to really see like how much work goes into these things. Yeah, totally. <laughs> no bigger guns. <laughs> your partner should be supportive no matter what you're into. Like, unless it's obviously a criminal, like, then don't support them. But your partner should be non judgmental of the it's things true. you like, or else it's just not gonna work out. I know. I don't. I've had a boyfriend in the past who was like that, who was like, oh, are you wearing that? And I'm like, um, <laughs> yes, it's on my body. <laughs> Yes, I am wearing that, and I just, I just, bad vibes. I don't like it, you know, they should be excited for you because you're excited for you. Exactly. Why should they not want to see you happy? Really? Yeah. At the end of the day. I agree. If they don't like what you like, then, like, that's okay. If they're not actually into it, that's totally okay, but support should always be there. Right. That's
segue perfectly into what kind of dating advice would you give someone who is into <laughs> this kind of fashion? I have not dated anyone new <laughs> in over 10 years now, so I don't think I'm really the person to ask. So my advice is to ask Inky for advice. I guess the one advice I would give when you're just starting to date is where what is most comfortable to you like i chose to go in, on our first date in normal clothes because i wanted to be comfortable mm -hmm. but like literally the second date i wore full lolita get up and I, he was fine with it obviously not everyone is going to be fine with your crazy fashion it's i think it's a little selfish actually to assume everyone is okay with being around you when you draw so much attention to yourself like some people really hate being the center of attention and yeah. for whatever reason like i mean i understand it's uncomfortable sometimes when you're walking around and normal people are literally stopping mm -hmm. you on the street to ask you questions and some people really don't like that but i think if it is a big part of your life then the person you're wanting to date should be at least understanding of what you're doing I agree. And don't feel obligated to dress differently, like on a first date. Exactly. I think I fell into that trap where I would kind of like... More wear... yourself yeah, into like, what they want. Yes, I would like wear something that I thought that they would want me to wear, which is ridiculous. Yeah, but I think that's like really good general dating advice is just be yourself because at some point your weird self is going to show up anyway. And if they find out about it later and they don't like it, then you're the one who's stuck in like a weird position. I think it's Prosecco time. Oh yeah. I don't know if I'm allowed to show drinking on YouTube, but we're drinking. Oh, I do it all the time. Are you kidding me? <laughs> had one long feed of posts that were related to your interests. I miss Live Journal. I do. I feel like such a nerd for even <laughs> remembering Live Journal. I'm like an old woman, but yeah, I think just the fact that there were, um, it was a little less easily digestible. It was like text posts or you'd get tutorials, you know, wardrobe posts, that kind of thing. It was all in one place. What about you? I really miss Tumblr. Honestly. Really? Okay. I was very into Tumblr. I think that it's like format was great you could do really interesting collages it wouldn't just be one image and then you have to slide to see the rest mm -hmm. you could like actually format them to kind of create like a visual story and i miss being able to curate like a feed basically mm -hmm. for other people to see you could pull, pull all of your inspirations or anything interesting that you've been finding like you could have music mm -hmm. you could have the text posts Honestly, Instagram feels kind of like superficial a little bit because it's so like image based. The other thing about Instagram is we're always trying to please the algorithm, which no one really used to do on Tumblr. You just put stuff out there and let it go, released it into the wild. Yeah, Instagram almost feels like it has a little bit of pressure associated with it because there's no curation aspect like there was on Tumblr. It's all focused on original content. I definitely sometimes feel the urge to like pump out a new garment constantly so that my feed remains interesting and, and all of that, which is not important. I like shouldn't feel that way, but sometimes I do. Yeah, it's big pressure. All right, next question. I think this is the final question. Is this the last question? Yeah, oh. it's a good one. 
That's a good one. So where are we gonna go once lockdown's over? I don't know, I'm feeling very traumatized by lockdown. I don't know if I'd be able to go out. I think we should go on like an island vacation. Oh my God, that sounds amazing. I'm gonna make a little 1890s bathing costume Ooh. and everyone's gonna be like, what? What are you wearing? <laughs> like, don't worry about it, I'm a ghost. <laughs> I think we need to get away from the gray skies of Seattle for a little while. Ugh, I'm stuffed. I feel great. I love you. <laughs> Me too. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed spending Valentine's Day with us. Let us know in the comments what you're doing for Valentine's Day. Bye! Bye! Okay, that's good. Yeah! Yeah. Be roll. <laughs>